Energy signal originating from under the earth. Under the earth. Sorry, coming back to Earth here, guys. Uh, we are happy to have you on. Sorry, we're just kind of rambling. We were having a weird time getting started here. This is going to be an interesting episode because we're very undecided on a lot of the topics that we're going to talk about today. Oh, yeah. Um, Honestly, we... there is no hard opinion on these, yeah. th this, no. this set of topics that go together. Um like not so much like birds of a feather, but they go together. No, yeah, like like various insects in the insect <laughs> kingdom. <laughs> like insects or like other insects, like that's how they go together. <laughs> like so. how how insects are insects, and most of them have an exoskeleton. Hey, yeah, that's how they go together. They, they all have something like an exoskeleton. Super slight <laughs> cohesive ability to maintain their structure um before rick gives our blurb we wanted to tell you guys we really enjoy um the honest dialogue we've been getting mm -hmm. from from some of you from some of y'all um no. in particular we have been dialoguing back and forth with um thomas vine right now i have to put my phone Vines. back on and make i think it's plural it is vines. It is vines. plural. You yeah. are correct. Um, he's he's so interesting. There was a book he was talking about in um, the the Facebook um, conversation. <laughs> oh, one of them. I, I don't even like, remember which in one. In the Facebook, I was like, Rosie Shell. No, really? in the Facebook, <laughs> the Facebook conversation. conversation. Okay, that's, that's but I don't remember which one. And we asked him, "Hey, could you find the?" This is like several weeks title. ago. Yeah, and he found it and sent us yeah. a link, and we've been um, talking about it forth. through direct message, and um, and we just wanted to give a shout out to Thomas woo, Vines. Woo. But if you want a shout out like Thomas, we would love to have dialogue with you, honest conversation. That's what we're here for. We really do take God at His word when He says, "Come, let us reason together." We can't yes, make you too for only two ninety nine. No. Can come and reason together. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you can come reason together for the low price of free ninety nine. You just got to use your thumbs. That's right. Your free ninety nine. Right. Um, but we we appreciate Thomas and all of the the interesting and fun things he has shared with us i think we we have laughed on In all our sides trialogue. of conversation and it is a trial <laughs> <laughs> um but we told him hey we're dedicating yeah. this um episode to you and we are um sure be like know. thomas he is awesome awesome he is awesome for finding awesome. that book for us and sharing really really interesting information yeah no very and, interesting perspectives that I was oh, like, like the book you shared, I was like, good. what? So we really, really oh, enjoyed it. But, but yeah. that's what we're looking for in this uh, endeavor. So <laughs> well, um, come, let us reason together. Yes. And not for two ninety nine for free. $2 Trolls $2 can go live under the bridge, though. Trolls that's where they like, under the bridge. That's where they like to live. So. 
Um, <clears throat> yes, Maybe. and having said that, yeah. I will give the blurb now. And I'll be super quick, guys. You can uh, find us, um, obviously, at solo.to slash the CTDW, solo.to slash the CTDW, solo.to slash the CTDW. Uh, you can follow us at Spotify, YouTube, Rumble. Uh, Rumble's a kind of a pain in the butt because I usually have to break everything up. Um, it only allows me, like, a certain – it, like, caps the video amount that you can upload for each video. And so it's like, uh, so sometimes I have to break these into two two pieces, which is a pain, honestly. Um, so that's why I'm a little slower on Rumble, but I will eventually get around to it. Um, Honestly, Spotify is your best bet, guys. Yeah. Spotify is my like, favorite place. They, honest, for the most part, honestly, I would say they're they're very very uh, free speech for the most part. You know, I I don't think anybody nowadays is all 100 percent free speech, but um, I would say they're the closest thing that we're going to get right now um, between them and Rumble. Um, Rumble Rumble's right. probably higher up there, but really because of their their cap limit, I'm just like, dude. Uh, ugh, I don't want to be uploading three videos for for one video. You know, we have long form content, and if they can't, you know, how's that? It is what it is. I'm gonna go somewhere else. And Spotify has been great to us. They really have. Um, absolutely. So like all props to Spotify. Absolutely, man. They've been really cool. They're they're really growing the platform, and I um, they're actually sponsoring us. By the way, guys, if you would like to start a podcast, a podcast. By the way, go do a podcast, a Spotify podcast. Ooh, I should coin that and send it to them. They'll like me, right? Um, TM, TM. Don't beat it to me. <laughs> don't beat me to it. I mean, um, yeah. So they they are one of our sponsors, and we have really enjoyed working with them. So if you guys are interested in doing that. Or just following them in general, supporting them in general, we really appreciate it. You can uh, jump on board with us on Patreon for as little as three bucks, or on Spotify for two ninety nine. That's that's what our uh, subscription costs, and we're giving you guys access to early episodes. This one will air on Wednesday. I'm trying to make it so that that's the case now. Every Wednesday morning, these are airing, and every Friday morning, morning these air for everybody else. If there's additional content behind the paywall, obviously, if you're subscribed, you're going to get that, and if you're not, you're not. So. Um, yeah, that's how that works. You guys can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Spotify, uh, sorry, Facebook, Twitter. Um, oh my gosh, just like TikTok and Instagram, uh, Twitter, also known as X. And, uh, we are subscribed as blue X now blue Twitter. So we're legit official. There's an actual legit, the Christian theological dark web. You can find us at the CTDW on any of those. We Having said that, it. yes. Did you mention YouTube? What about it? The that big... we're also on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's right down okay. there, also, right? It is also. It <clears throat> is under you. And I am. And if you're a Patreon subscriber, that's where you're able to go and watch these episodes. By the way, Patreon subscribers, I apologize. Um, they took one of our videos down, so I might have to mod it and re-upload it if you're not able to have access to it. My apologies. I'll get on it as soon as I possibly can. But um, it is in the back of my mind there. So. Um, yeah, yeah. So today, interesting topic. I think, I think that's that for that. Yeah. By the way, Ricky's not as cool as I am. I'm not. I'm just a. I'm just a. I'm just a lame polyglot. <laughs> he yeah. just is Groot in a lot of different languages. What has he wa Groot song? I am a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, well, my pronouns are. Told that just doesn't look right. Told so. you so. Yeah. My yeah. mom's going to be really impressed because I never wear shirts with writing on it. I really yeah, don't Yeah, I don't like think them. I've ever seen you one do that either. You won't. Yeah. I'm yeah. really, I mean, you might see me representing UTEP. I mean, you know, because I gave them stupid amounts of money for my education. Mm. Um, Good old UTEP. And, and then That's another 40 or 50 bucks, you know, to wear their name on my shirt. So I could give them advertising I paid for. Anyhow. Sports, so, yeah, sports, usually sports, I sports, don't sports, do sports, it. Sports, 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 <laughs> <laughs> No, geology. No. Tell us, geology, 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 geology. <laughs> Nicely done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, that is, actually does remind me. Guys, we have some... <sighs> I'm in the process of doing shirts and merch and all that stuff, but shirts I think are going to have to wait just a little bit longer than I expected. So that means I am on the trail of we're going to start with stickers. We're just going to start small, nothing huge, but I have a few designs out. So within the next week or two, I'm really hoping um, to be able to buy the adequate printer for what I need to do. 
and start pew, 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 pumping those guys out. We will have some designs online and I'm not sure which ones they're going to be, but we want you guys to give feedback, which ones you like the most. And those vote will be the mine. ones that we blast out first. Yes, absolutely. Vote for Shelly's and for <laughs> mine too. I I don't know what to say. Um, one is one is definitely going to be the self-titled uh, the Christian Theological Dark Web pod, podcast. So, um, and we've got like a million colors, so we're going to let you guys choose which ones. Because you guys think what is we awesome. want you to do is pay to advertise us. Rep us, rip us, yeah. <laughs> um, on that I think note, it should just say exactly that solo.to the ctdw. Well, I'm going to definitely put the uh, the little uh, QR code on there, so that'll be there as well. Nice. In the back or something. Um, okay. Twenty having minutes said in, that, we'll get started in, in the actual episode now. <laughs> good night. Um, am I freezing again? You better stop that stupid. You're not freezing. Internet. I okay. see you just fine. Uh, my internet's annoying me guys we are talking about ley lines hollow earth and the underground tunnels today um it's going to be an interesting episode because we have a lot of information but it's all a little bit disjointed um so we're just going to kind of present you guys with what we have learned what we are are in the process of discovering and uh kind of take it from there yeah and i think that the code word of the day is this information a lot of it is sketchy <laughs> i kind of have to go with sketchy yeah yeah, the, yeah today's episode brought to you by the word sketchy s-k-e-t-c-h-y i just made that up on the spot I like that. <laughs> good job uh, yay he can spell too <laughs> yes. yes um i can't repeat it i don't remember how it goes <laughs> so, <laughs> um, not the spelling, the song. Um, right. I know how to spell it. Yes, thank God. Phew. So, <laughs> we're gonna basically kind of walk you guys through, um, I guess, kind of a rough draft as why we think there's any any even credibility here, um, because there are some strong proponents for reasons why stuff like this clearly at, at some level has to exist because it exists, right? But we don't know if as far ahead as we're thinking exists. So we're just going to kind of put that disclaimer out there. Like some of these pieces do exist and they're, they're literally irrefutable because they're places and things that exist. But on the other hand, we don't know how deep, pun intended, we don't know how deep that rabbit hole goes or that Nephilim hole, I guess we could say. <laughs> All right. Hey, Rick, Ooh, start... follow the Nephilim hole. That's oh, that's gosh. follow, 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 follow the Nephilim hole. But it would be like follow, 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 follow the Nephilim hole, right? Because yeah, they're not, they're not little making... munchkins. Not no more. No, they're right. giantkins. Yeah, yeah. Shall I? Shall you want to start with like kind of where our ideas are at, or? Well, what I what I wanted to start with is here's here's where we're going, guys. Down the line, we have um, the goal to talk about some some lost civilizations, mm -hmm. some civilizations mm -hmm. that possibly were um and we want to find out more about them um nobody can provide super hard evidence for them um so i decided i that i start would start after having a total bust with ley lines but i'll go back to that in a minute sure i decided to google you know list of lost lands um uh lost civilizations civilizations that that disappeared with no apparent reason and mm -hmm. the list is long like there's a subheading to the list of lost lands in <laughs> wiki of course it's crazy yes. long lovely alliteration there um it, one of the subheadings <laughs> is submerged lands and there's like Zealandia, 
Um, Dadu Island. Is Zealandia uh, German? Um, Zealandia. Zealandia. <laughs> <laughs> they're not saying they're not saying Zealandia. It would have been Doth anyway. Um, I don't even know where Zealandia is supposed to be. Greater Adria, they're they're mythical, so I don't know. Um, there's <laughs> Balkan Tolia. You want to guess where that is? Maybe in the Mediterranean Sea. Beringia. There's Dodger Land. Oh, yeah, sorry, that's... Dogger, Dogger Land. Oh, I was gonna say that's a baseball Land. team that, that got consumed <laughs> Dog... by the earth. Right, Dogger <laughs> Land. There's Ferdinandia. Ferdinandia. Okay. Uh, I'm not making them up. No, George, I know. George <laughs> Sand, which is off the Danish coast, I guess. Mm. And some mm. of these places like existed until recently when they were like mm -hmm. flooded away. That um, makes sense. Kerguelen Plateau, Maui Nui, which is um, in the Hawaiian, oh, I can never mm. say this word well, Archipelago. I know that's not how you say archipelago? it. Archipelago? Archipelago, yes. Yeah. Um, but that's where that. Easter Island is. Um, Newmore Island, Raven Sir Odd. Yeah, everything about that is odd, that is. Uh, you want to try this next one? Semyonovsky Island. You? I'm looking. It's in the submerged oh, land. Oh, I see. Semyon Down. Semyonov Semyonovsky Island. I don't know. Nicely I done, Klaus. <laughs> Sundaland. Now, Sundaland is one that I've really heard of. Um, I think it's because it's popular in um, English... Um, storytelling viking bergen banks hmm it's crazy so where is zealandia in the pacific ocean probably down somewhere near new zealand that would make sense to me yeah. uh mythological lands there's agartha, agartha which will we be we will be touching on we will atlantis which, which we, we will, will devote <laughs> probably episodes in the plural yeah. Too. For sure. Uh, Avalon, Bunyan, Contre. Oh, gosh, I can't with that one. It's Welsh. Oh, my goodness. Really? With cats. Go. Get. Mm. get no. Wrong Contre way. Gual, 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 lat. I mean, it's Welsh, so no wonder I can't pronounce right, it. Right. It is Welsh. So I think the Welsh have Iram. magical mouths. Oh, that's cool. Um, Iram of the Pillars. Jamsborg. And Veneta, the Baltic Sea, Middle Ages. I mean, there's a ton here. El Dorado. Yeah. Uh, Kumari El Kingdom. Lemuria. So that. Lemuria is one oh, that yeah. I think also will come in to play. Um, gosh, try that next one. Lis Helgig. He Lis Helig. Helig. Lis Helig. I don't know. Leoness. Yeah, and then Heli Glan Glanawak. Uh, yeah, those are hard to pronounce. Uh, Some of them really are. Lioness oh, and Arthurian literature. Oh, right. Okay, Tristan. Sorry, go ahead. Shangri La. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Which we'll be touching on that one, too, yeah. which pretty much is oh. Shambhala. Shambhala. That's Shambhala. what Shangri La is. Yeah. Um, oh, this is one you could say that you know I will kill. I could say Cibola, but Guivira, Guivia, that's you, Rick. Kivira and Cibola. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, this is Ki Ki Ki. Kibira? I don't know if it's Kibira or Kibira. It's probably Kibira and Cibola. Well, Cibola, we've all, well, I, I don't know. I assume we've all heard of it. It's one of the, it, the cities of gold. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. De los conquistadores, right? From the Along with, right, El Dorado. Now that bad boy, there's all sorts of, oh my goodness. 
I didn't realize that. Wise. Oh, that's interesting. I played a video game when I was a kid called The Book of Wise. That's oh, interesting. Wise like that. W or sorry, Y S. It's a <clears throat> mythical drowned yeah. city in Brittany. So it's it's hmm. somewhere around probably the UK, between the UK and um France. Oh, that's interesting. Where Brittany yeah. would be. That's very cool. <clears throat> so apparently you guys can tell there's a lot of a lot of freaking weird so lands. Many. There's Phantom Islands. Did this even it did mention Atlantis and Mu. Yeah. Okay, so those are the two big yeah. ones that I was Wow, crazy amazing. Crazy thinking amazing. of that we're not talking about today. Um but we because we're kind of on an Atlantis um trip five channel treasure hunt <laughs> treasure hunt yeah no kidding where uh finding out how many other lost civilizations and continents yeah. there are so those are all places then there's there's um lost civilizations and any american should immediately be thinking of the lost colony of roanoke um, I also think of the, the lost tribes of, uh, the Anasazis, um, mm -hmm. the Aztec, Inca, Mayan, Olmec, uh, Indus Valley civilization, which is in Pakistan and, um, mm -hmm. the, the Pakistani, um, India area, mm -hmm. Easter Island, which would be the, um, the Rapa Nui or, uh, Part of those islands of Mew. Um, Kahakia from Illinois. Have you ever heard of that civilization? Mm -mm. Me either. Hmm. Which is crazy because, I mean, it's in our backyard, right? Yeah, no kidding. Well, considering that our backyard there's is a, like massive. <laughs> so a there's that. Big, just a little yeah. bit big. Yeah. In Cambodia, there is a lost civilization called Angkor Wat. In Jordan, a there Angkor is. Angkor what? Right. <laughs> Turn up for what? Oh my gosh. Actually, you yep. know what I was thinking was uh, Dead Kennedys. It's a holiday <laughs> in Cambodia. Yeah, oh sorry. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Go punk rock. Um, yeah. Jordan's Petra, which mm -hmm. Petra is one of the, the lost civilizations we'll eventually talk about as well. Because Petra, and, and I think we talked about them a little bit because Good they're megalithic structures. Yeah. Dude. Like, Megalith. and the doors are like 15, 20 feet tall. It's <laughs> insane and beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's the Terra Preta in amazon i'm probably not saying that great but sorry guys how do you p-r-e-t-a p-r-e-t-a yep so if it's portuguese it would be terra, terra preta would it be portuguese if it's in the amazon well not necessarily um but if it's t-e-r-r-a is it t-e-r-r-a then it's portuguese mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah. yeah so they the the portuguese must have named that group i wonder what they called themselves the portuguese and then there's, or the brazilian no no the Am amazonian Oof. tribe or uh civilization that's gone uh you know these no, are no, all no. civilizations that have ceased to exist and we don't know why yeah no not sure about then that then there's the axumite empire axumite axumite where do you think they might be from Dude, I don't even know. They're Ethiopian. Really? But I, yeah, I like that they're ites, like the Hittites and the Canaanites Indeed. and the Jebusites and the the Anukites, you know? So, mm. Aksumites, Hivites Aksumite so Empire in Ethiopia. Because there's mm. always, there's, there's so much interesting, um, correlation between uh israel and ethiopia it's like mm -hmm. i don't know it always interests me and and they're far away areas because here turkey so here's israel and here's ethiopia 
So my yeah. fingertip is Israel down here. My thumb is Ethiopia. That's a good distance for people who didn't mm -hmm. have cars. It's it's fascinating to me that distance, especially because the early church, because the early church was like, oh, we're running things this way, blah, 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 because they were closer to Jerusalem, right? And then people start traveling to Africa, and they're like, Ooh, wait, what? You guys already have Christianity here? Oh, right. okay. When did that happen? Right. I don't know. Probably, probably about the time some dude named Philip talked to some Ethiopian eunuch in a uh, chariot and then dunked him in in a dirty pool by the side of the road and then was beamed up by Scotty someplace else. So. You might say that it was a eunuch situation. <laughs> <laughs> one of a kind, one might even say. Uh, <laughs> you know, just just throwing that out there. I don't I don't know. Right, so. right, right. So anyhow, this got us looking at megaliths. As you know, if you've been along for the ride, you know we've been looking at megaliths and and pondering who made them, who who huh. could figure out ways to get seventy ton stones up a path down this way in the middle of a yeah. freaking pyramid. Um, I mean, not that the pyramid doesn't also make us wonder really where they came from because um, a lot of slaves with some ropes and pulleys and um, uh, tree trunks uh, rolling 50 ton boulders on wet sand seems a little bit preposterous not to mention the precision cuts and weird chemical makeup of the the freaking blocks so right there's right that. right um, there's so much there and if you have if you don't know what we're talking about go back and listen to or talking about go back and listen to our uh megalithic yeah um episodes because it's a very co it's a very cool right. episode um it, I think it's pro we'll probably do some more megalith megalithic oh, sites in, in the in I the can't future. see how hey, how we couldn't uh, definitely. But well, frankly, this, so this topic some... really lends itself to all of that. I mean, like that's really well, it does, of... it, and that's where like the whole thing of ley lines came from. Yes, was from Our um, come in here, dog. Fascination with megalithic sites in the first place, and then like right, people and people to saying, them, "Hey, and... are they all on these lines of?" of uh eh, the weirdos say power some sort of power lines um <laughs> people who maybe are I less weird <laughs> um look at them as maybe lines of geomagnetic um or electromagnetic mm -hmm. uh Resonance places where where there seems to be strong geomagnetic um, activity, activity currents. Yeah, I'm gonna activity. Go with. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then, really, when we looked into it, because we were like ley lines. Who? That's interesting. Let's see what Fancy. we can find out. Right. What we found out was really a lot of New Age gobbly good. and I don't know if there's some kernels of truth buried in there somewhere but really i got real tired of listening to um it's charging my chakras, weirdness. You know? it's charging my chakras, right. you know that's that's kind of most like what it was honestly and so it was so hard so ley lines kind of lend themselves to telluric um current oh, right, and at right. least that, that is science and you can measure it so um, telluric lines are, are something that uh, Nikola Tesla was was uh, very interested in because he thought, hmm, here here comes a very interesting, shall we call it conspiracy theory. <laughs> Tesla believed that he, we could um, tap into these currents underground um, and and he, way underground and then do a tower up um, and 
pull the the energy from these currents up and put free energy free electricity out to the earth mm -hmm. that couldn't be metered and measured and oh well you know build <laughs> so um wycliffe towers is uh, one of his famous experiments on this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, all sorts of weirdness surrounds it, as as does, you know, <laughs> Nikola, Nikola Tesla. Tesla himself, <laughs> right? Um, and and of course, you can't find a whole lot of his studies, his experiments, because uh, the government swooped in upon his death and just like took everything. Um, so to lurk currents didn't go too terribly didn't um deep for me um except that people could definitely you can manipulate them you you can measure them you can see that they're real so then it was like well i wonder if there's something to to tesla's um interest with energy underground tap, tamping into it and um, making it, freeing it above ground, I guess, the way to say mm -hmm. it. Um, so we know he was way before his time. Uh, he, he posited uh, having wireless uh, telephonic capabilities. Yeah. Yeah. 150 years ago just about Sorry. 150 Crazy. years ago when we were barely still tapping things out with the um uh what is that called at&t telegraph with the telegraph which oh, right. by the way the telegraph uses the uh telerik mm -hmm. um yeah. current that's that's what it taps into that's that's why you could do a <laughs> telegraph from one continent to another so i mean there's something there it's really interesting but it gets relegated to pseudoscience at best um and i yeah. i have to wonder if some of that the reason behind that is because um big utilities companies <clears throat> throughout the world at least the western world want to bill us for everything they don't want there yeah. to be free energy they don't want there to be um free cellular service they don't they don't want there to be any of those things you know if they can bill it and make money off of it then that's what they want to do this is a total um random aside which i know is a little bit of a rabbit hole um literally in this case no pun intended um but i i really do think that a lot of these technologies um in the new heavens and new earth we will have access to a lot of this stuff very easily oh very, man very, i very super easily. agree we're gonna have like wi-fi that always works never goes down never is slow um whatever vehicles that we take because it, it seems like the angels took vehicles probably still take vehicles mm -hmm. um the whole chariots of fire thing with with you know flaming chariots flaming horses there's some some interesting um topics uh, studies out there might be a better word uh talking about how that word really is not chariot but vehicle right it's just the vehicle of that time was all a chariot that existed were chariots for humans so so There's the that. same as tissues we call them all kleenex but right. you know kleenex is the brand um and other tissues are not necessarily kleenex right. but we lump them all together that is how the writers of the old testament um lumped in the the word vehicle or conveyance to be chariot yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so um i think Telerik Rick lines. Telerik lines. Sorry, what were you going to say? I was going to say take it away. Oh, right on. Okay. Um, well, goodness. Where should we start here? So, 
Uh, like Shelly <laughs> said, we, we were talking about ley lines, and we were both kind of, I think we're developing a system where we kind of attack different different parts of a subject, kind of from our own perspective, or what, what kind of um, path we seem to find, you know, kind of leading us where, um, where we're going. And Shell and I were talking during this week that uh, she's like, well, I've been researching for a, a long time and I know what to look for and I, ha- I know how to look. And I was like, mm, that's fair. Because for me, it's a little bit newer. Like I've done research, but not nearly as much and not not for f- for sheer pleasure's sake. You know, like it is interesting. <laughs> I actually do enjoy researching these topics. And so if I stumble on other stuff too, it's, oh, this is super cool, you know, so I get to write it down it quick. I have notebooks that I, I, I have my notebooks that are always with me that I write things down when I, when I come across something and I think, oh, this is a good topic. Fortunately for me, I don't have, you know, cause most, most uh, scientists and, and crazy people that want to write things down in the moment, their hair gets unkempt and crazy. I don't have any hair to worry about, so I'll be okay. Just my beard will what be are you? What are you? What are you saying? Oh, but you're a girl. I mean, that's different. Dudes I have crazy are just hair. Like, <laughs> dudes, but but dudes are just like they won't cut their hair for like months on end <laughs> if they don't have to. <laughs> so, fortunately for me, I won't have any crazy hair. Um, I just won't have any. Um, like... I'm, like, I'm gonna pull my hair out. Uh, let me rub my head instead. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was going to talk, I guess we're going to start is why, why we think this is even relevant. Um, because ley lines w- was an interesting subject, but really the reason that we got onto ley lines, which is kind of an, an important segue here is because we're really interested in, and this is the irrefutable fact guys, this is not up for argument. Like you can argue with us all day, but these things exist. There are gigantic, huge long tunnel systems under the earth everywhere. I mean, they're bloody everywhere. The Grand Canyon has them. Um, and there's people, I remember just yeah, reading not that guarded long ago. in the this, Grand Canyon. That's what? They're very guarded in the Grand Canyon. The Extremely. Hopi Indian own. The Hopis, yep. Yeah, they own all the rights to um, the entrances. Yep. And their sacred ground, and um, and their and their their belief people is that, are not allowed in. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's totally it's totally blocked off. And actually, their their um their ancestor, well, they believe that their ancestors actually came from under the earth. Like that's where the they came people. from. Yeah, yeah. So, which is kind of lending to. I love this topic. lore. Yeah, it's super this is fascinating. Some of my favorite. It's super fascinating. When I when I read that, I went whoa crazy well red or right. whatever it was i was doing um so so that's kind of part of it and th- these are all over the place two you know there's a few t- places that we're going to talk about in particular um one of these sites i am hoping and praying to visit in december so exciting um, i already checked out when i can go there's no limits on dates it's super cheap to get in that's super so cheap nice. to take pictures and video and all that kind of stuff so I mean, I'm going to pay the equivalent of like six American dollars to go do what I want to do, which is great. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. So um, I'll get to that more in a second. But but really the reason we're studying these is because we're interested in these tunnels and passageways um, underground, these subterranean ones, right? Um, they are absolutely fascinating. They're absolutely kind of mind-boggling uh, when you see some of these things. Just Just unreal, man. You're just like... What in the world? Who could have dug this crazy thing? Nephilim. So, um, you know, and that's what we think anyway. Or in part, in part. I don't think it was probably just Nephilim. In fact, I'm pretty convinced the more that I kind of study this stuff, it, I think it was a joint venture between mankind and demigods and gods themselves. So, you know, that's kind of probably all working together. And um, then probably also smart enough to take advantage of what is uh, geological formations as sure. well. Sure, you know, sure, water sure. tunneling through the earth, magma, blah, blah, you know? You know, I'm, I'm, that's not to say that humans are not ingenious, you know, and don't figure out ways to do things on their own. Absolutely. Um, you know, I was right. I was actually thinking about that particular, it's, it's good that you mentioned that. I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, you know, maybe, I think that I, we've just been, we're so force fed this idea that that humans did all this stuff that so i'm i'm so like i've been in a kind of a a a state of mind where like yeah but i don't think humans did that yeah but i don't think humans did that you know 
to now where I'm like, okay, well, let's let's be fair to humans. Humans are not, you know, we do have our own cultures. We've developed our own cultures without the help of outside forces. You know, I know that we all like there's all give and take there, but we do have all have our own ways of thinking and our own ideas and our own cultures and our own communities. You know, that's independent of um, spiritual higher beings. Right. So um, that is not to discredit or discount human ability or ingenuity by any stretch of the imagination. Now then, having said that, <laughs> burrowing out bedrock is pretty crazy. Right. So, and we're not talking about like a small room. We're talking about miles and miles underground sometimes. Just crazy stuff. So that is a big deal, right? And we got to thinking about, well, what does this mean? Is it, is this, I mean, is this, were these used as passageways that, that, you know, honestly, were the Nephilim using these as passageways? Were the, were the condemned sons of God under the earth bound in chains using these as passageways? I mean, I don't know what that means. I don't know what it could be used for. This is, this is all supposition. Um, but I think it's interesting and, and useful, frankly, to think about because we know that these places, places exist just like we know megaliths exist. They're not right. avoidable and, topics. And the, the Bible at the very least intimates that um, there are entities under the earth. Yeah. Revelation 5.13 says, every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea goes on. Um, Philippians says that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Christ is Lord um, in the heavens and earth and under the earth. Yeah. So there's absolutely. something there's something there with with the under the earth, and I think that most Christians we just all relegate it to um, spiritual dimension. euphemisms for the place of the dead. Yeah. Right. right. And I mean, there's something to that, but there is also yes. you know you know how the Bible is. Yeah. It's there's something very literal, and then there's something more figurative. Quite frequently, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's multiple meanings because yeah. God is is because his manifold wisdom is <laughs> manifold so that's absolutely right um, um there's there's something to be said to under the earth in in case you know you think we've we've gone uh off out of the end. realm of of uh biblical worldview no no mm -hmm. we're still there yeah, no, I mean, um, and I'm going to get here in, in a second to kind of why that, you know, more in depth kind of scriptural reasons why we think that that these are relevant conclude or not. Re yeah, let's use that word. That's a good word. Relevant conclusions to come to not necessarily. Um, uh, what's the word in, in English? Foolproof or uh, man, immutable. Im thank you. Oh, right. That's a They're good not word. immutable. Hmm. In contundente is there a word contundente does that sound so like non-contested that yeah, would be non-contested okay, okay. Yeah. i mean it because uh, sound i think is just what we would say in english there's sound reasons. right yeah um so anyway some of those reasons are the following and we're going to kind of give a basic real basic layout we're going to kind of visit a few concepts back from genesis 6 uh that will help us kind of form why we're even kind of in this ballpark. So let's start there. Um, we all know, you know, if you've followed us for any amount of time or you're into this stuff at all, then you will very well know that um, the giants were wiped off the earth, right? They were destroyed in that flood. Um, in what way, which is kind of up for debate. Um, and really here, not, not solely, but largely a lot of these uh, suppositions that we're making today are based on some of the actual grammar in Hebrew, as I understand, as Shelley and I have understood it. We haven't done a deep dive on this, so you know, again, we're not we're not making any super big big claims that this is a like a super sound, uh, philosophical, religious, and and fully thought out concept, right? But th these are uh, concepts we're... that are, are are worth exploring. Right. Right. So. We're we're supposing we're at the the supposition part of yes. this uh, clue game. Correct. Uh, one of the things that Shell and I have have um, hotly pursued is how 
how and if the Nephilim were able to survive the flood. Some, um, some Nephilim. Right, right, right. I wouldn't even all. say a large amount of them, if any yeah, at all, either. right? Now, now, it could be that none of them survived at all, right? right? And there was other incursions, which I think is entirely possible. Uh, I, don't, right. I don't think that's weird at all. Um, if the Bible's setting it up for us once, and it says that as in the days of Noah, so on and so forth, I think that Jesus was very tri clearly trying to tell us, hey, this is not a one-and-done sort of thing, bro. Well, right, you know? no, because he says, as it was in the days of Noah, so it right. will be at the days of the return of the Son of Man. Well, and, and also, it goes back to, to that typology of Adam and Eve sinned. Mm -hmm. They did sin. Yep. But I cannot blame my deserving the wages of sin on them. Correct. I earned the wages of sin. I yeah. I have sinned. I have sure. committed treason against the Most High. Um, yep. Each one of us is guilty of that. <laughs> so yes, Adam and Eve uh, were were the progenitors of it. They brought it in, um, but we all have sinned, except yep. for Jesus. Yep. All the rest of us have sinned. Yeah. And so we can't we can't like just blame it on a oh, stupid Adam and Eve. Oh, stupid Shelly, man, mm -hmm. I've done it. And and so um, on that same typology, th that same um, rule that, yes, Adam and Eve yep. sinned, but we all sin and keep doing it. The an angels have sinned, and s then some other angels came in and sinned. <laughs> And, and I mean, we go into this as well, and eventually I think that we will spend a good amount of time parked in the, um, the treasons of the angels, because yeah. they were the angels who sinned. Jude, uh, Jude talks about them. Uh, they did not keep their estate, right? their, their rightful estate, um, and specifically, though, he's not talking about when um, when Halil said, um, I will ascend mm -hmm. to the throne of God and be worshipped right. as God right. in I Isaiah um, 14, I think it is. It's either yeah. chapter 12 or chapter 14. He's talking about the angels that saw women were comely and took them to wife. Yep. And yep, yep, procreated yep. because uh, Jude's talking specifically about sexual sin, right? Um, in in his book, so we know it happened several times. The Bible talks about several different times when the angels um, sinned, committed treason against Yahweh, yeah. and so it's it, it's the same. It, my my um the point i'm trying to make is just as i have sinned since adam and eve ushered sin into the earth right angels it wasn't a one other and done angels thing. have sinned Correct. yeah it hasn't just been oh that was it no other angel can sin i think maybe they can yeah i and hope most of them don't yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes yes there's a lot more to be said about that. I, I totally agree. I was actually reading something about that on um, from the Unseen Realm this week, uh, as a matter of fact. But we're not going to get into that. Good old Mike Kaiser. Yeah. I love <laughs> Sorry, Kaiser. I derailed you enough. No, 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 no. That's okay. That's okay. It's, it's a legit, it's a legit um, uh, commentary to be made. So having said that, um, we have come to the auspices of the idea that when the Bible tells us that all the mountaintops were covered in the flood, it's one of those things where it, this is what I think, because I've heard this, this, um, this idea explained, and I'm going to give you my two cents. And once again, put the, uh, the disclaimer on there that I haven't looked into this hundred percent. So, you know, you don't have to take this at my word. We're just making suppositions and we're just making, it's just conjecture from this point. And I'm giving you my perspective on a very limited amount of knowledge that I have of this particular prop, uh, topic. Right, right. So in the Hebrew, apparently when it says that it covered all the earth, when the waters, when, when it says that God covered the, that the waters covered the entire earth, 
it says that it covers all the mountaintops and it doesn't also. Now, I'm going to tell you as a translator and as a linguist, as a linguist, what that may be referencing. You know how sometimes we have phrases, in, even in English, you know, that you'll say the phrase, but it doesn't necessarily have to mean everything, right? Like, so let, let, let's take an example. Um, yeah, that's a, this is a super easy one, okay? So someone says... Hey, man, are we going to the movies on Friday? Oh, for sure, bro, for sure. We're for sure going to the movies, right? Or someone could say, um, yeah, so that guy told me that we should go, and and uh, I think it would be a good idea if we went to, the, to go see the movie. Oh, for sure. Right. <laughs> the difference in tone is, is apparent when I'm speaking, but if you're reading it, you're... I mean, unless you start having more context, you know, then you have to kind of figure out what's going on. Now, the reason that it may have been translated, because the way it sounds is, is that when you read it in the Hebrew, it's like it was covered. Everything was covered, but the tippy tops were covered, but they weren't covered. It's one of those weird, I think it's one of those weird grammatical open-ended ex phrases that the Bible uses. And that may have been intentional um, on you know, on the writer's part, really, I, I can't say it's, it's something I have to look into. So, you know, don't quote me on it again. But um, the reason I'm mentioning it is as an as a translator, when you make a decision, a, tra a, a translation decision, which is what it's literally called, right? Upon taking making that that translation decision, that's going to affect the entire rest of your translation decisions, right? So if you're running with one idea, you're going to follow that idea and it's going to it's going to be seen throughout all of the rest of your translation that's not to that's not to say that you're trying to manipulate the translation i'm just saying sometimes with with a certain mindset you you will translate cer certain things a certain way for example in in my own profession as an interpreter i have had to deal with in the past car accidents and i have to explain what the person is saying to a claims adjuster and that claims adjuster has to make a decision about what happened to the vehicle and what happened to the individuals in the vehicle and the other parties involved, right? And so sometimes I'm creating physical imagery in my head about what was going on, even though I wasn't really there and I don't really actually know what that scenario looks like. So there's tricky decisions to be made when you're when you translating things, right? And so the writer of of in itself wrote one thing and the translator may have misunderstood may have understood something very very different um making sure did you lose michelle no i'm here i'm here oh Oof, man. you're frozen okay you're back real, we're good real bad there yeah my internet's going in and out Let, i'm just going to say it one more time just to make sure so you can make decisions whereas where you're you're thinking about certain ideas and those ideas are completely you know, absent from where you actually are observing what's happening when in reality, you know, they're, they're a totally different place, they're a totally different circumstance, but you have to create scenarios in your head and run with that translation. So sorry, just if I repeated myself, I apologize. So in, in, in essence, a translator's decision really makes a big difference in what's being translated um, based on the original text. Now, having given that huge long disclaimer, the reason that we're mentioning that is, well, what if some of the Nephilim did escape the flood? What if they actually did es escape the flood? Now, some people believe that there was Nephilim that got on the boat and went over on the boat and, you know, that, uh, what is it, uh, Shem, is it Shem's wife that they say yeah, in theory? may have had polluted DNA. Right. There's no reason God would have done that. He I would think not it's weird. have. He didn't tell these guys, hey, go out and gather two of the clean animal or sorry, seven of the clean animal, two of the unclean animal. Um, he, he didn't tell them, go do that. Right. He brought the animal specimen yeah. himself. By the way, yes, a lion could be with a lamb in the ark, especially if it's a, a cub and, and a lamb. Could sure. you get a dinosaur on the ark? You sure could in its eggy form, couldn't you? I don't know if God made a tie, a, a 
triceratops come and and hold two eggs in its mouth or whatever and drop them at Noah's feet for Noah to take in. I, I don't know how God did it, but I know he could do it. Sure. And um, absolutely. It, the, it, people are like, the ark is ridiculous. You couldn't fit all of the animals in the ark. Like you really, really could. Like I, we really could even today. That is something that we could do. You just have to not be an idiot about it. And the cool thing is, is God's really, really brilliant. Also, um, geez, we really need to have that guy on at some time in the future. <laughs> um, do you remember his name again? I'm going to forget it off the top of my head. Um, our highly educated academic um, Israeli friend that we watched on YouTube. Oh, um, you know what? I can Pavlovsky. tell you because he... He, he, he happens to be, um, so one of cool. his videos is in my queue waiting to... Well, I'm going to give a quick disclaimer Ephraim about that while you're Pav looking at Ephraim. Ephraim. Ephraim Palvanov. P-A-L-V-A-N-O-V. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Palvanov. Um, yeah, so just to give a quick disclaimer about that, he actually talks about potentially how the, it's said that there's translation for the word window in the top of the arc. He says that in theory that that was like a light source of some type and that in the I'm not going to get super into this like because I'm not going to try and butcher it. I'm just giving you guys some kind of ideas to play with that when the animals actually came into the ark that um, potentially the ark literally opened up into like its own physical dimension where the animals were able to run free and do their thing. And it right, was because this kind of is a crazy this idea. is well, and and that's a um, that is an aspect of why we call that big boat an ark because it shares that same intermit interdimensionality dimensionality as the ark as yeah, the right. ark of the covenant. Correct. Yeah. Which so, also um, yes. Yeah, the, it, it's, it's, that is like a super fascinating um, idea. We'll link that in the and description. It, and again, because we take all of the supernatural out of the Bible when we right. tell the stories in, in our modern culture, right. um, like we miss all of these things. And also, Americans don't know what a first century Jew was taught or what a, a 10th century BCE Jew was taught, you know, um, we, we truly lose so much in translation. It's so frustrating for me hmm. because it, it's frustrating for me because then I find out these things and I'm like, why didn't I know this 20 years ago? You know, now this makes more sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anyway, we won't we won't uh, get into those details too much because that's not our, our subject for today. But it is super fascinating. Right. It is and super fascinating. Will, dang it! We will have to come back to that. Um, maybe we might just have on Ephraim. Uh, I would really like to if he'd oh be willing. Oh my gosh, me too. Soon enough. Soon enough. We're by the way, guys. We're we're gonna actually sit this the rest of this year, which is the next <laughs> basically three months, and then from there we're we're looking at. Um, starting to have some guests on we, we want to like you know kind of have a solid footing before we step out and i just really right. felt that the lord was like hey you guys just need to sit and incubate a little bit so that's what we're doing we're still um, babies yes <laughs> so <laughs> that's right baby podcasters um so if they did escape that is kind of if any of them i should say did escape then that's what we're basing some of our a lot of our ideas on but also, frankly, now that I think about it, even if there were more incursions, that's a good place to hide. It's a good place to there hide. There seems there seems to be something about under the ground again. There yeah. just there does. Yeah. Um, and and honestly, could it have been both poss possibly? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it sure could have. Um, so I guess from there we are going to start with. Um, we talked a little about about underground passages. Um, but I think we're going to move to, yeah, I guess Agartha is a good place to start. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, she's going to have to help me fill in any stuff I miss, Shell, because this is kind of... I think this is kind of a not a newer necessarily idea, but just like making sure we get all the details as best we can. Right. Um, so Agartha is in theory, and if I remember correctly, is um, an ancient in the ancient uh, Indian texts, uh, scriptural texts that they have. They believe right, it's in the v- Vedic texts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That this was a um, an island, and it was inhabited by. A higher race, uh, very fair skinned, if I remember correctly, blonde hair, which seems to be. Aren't the, they the always thing. well? Because this is the area too where Aryanism comes from. Yes. And, and, and the term Aryan comes from Iran. <laughs> right. It like like literally, <laughs> oh, um, and in Iran, <laughs> I should make this to where we can see my map better, but. Here, here is Iran, and here Iran is, is India. I'm just Iran is huge. <laughs> actually. Well, I mean, it, it is huge. <laughs> yes, I'm for, Okay, I'm like, it, it's real big compared to Israel. Well, <laughs> geez. But this is the area that we're talking about between India and Iran. But mm-hmm. here, this is a place, uh, Pakistanis are very, very fair. Um, the peoples of these areas are pretty fair skin. Yeah, hmm. really. The the whole Aryan thing, it, contrary to modern belief, Hitler did not come up with the idea of Aryanism. Yeah. No, he he liked it. He came across it, and he was very intrigued by it. But he did. He is not the. Well. The creator. He felt like it was a good ideology. fit. He felt like it was a good fit for his, you know, racial identitarian power politics. grab. So yeah, well, yeah, right, for, frankly, for his whole power grab. I right. mean, what he did was was less about um, racism and more about power hunger, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is which is probably still really an accurate statement for what ails the planet. Yeah, it is way less about people not liking their neighbor's tan, and way more about power-hungry humans wanting their power. Yeah, and using any scapegoat that that's convenient for them, right? Um, yeah. Which may be for some people maybe a hard pill to swallow, uh, but it's not to say he wasn't racist. It's just to say. Uh, his his. I mean, not, oh yeah. Don't not don't get me wrong. He was he was a devil. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but anyway, so that's a good point because the Aryans were a particular race that were were what you and I typically think of whenever we hear the blue eye, yellow, blonde hair sort of thing, fair skin. We always think, oh, white, tall, blonde Europeans. That's what he wanted. Nordic. Right. Right. Correct. Of German, of German, um, ascent, right? Like that's exactly. Germanic descent. Yeah. Descent. Sorry. Sorry. Spanish is ascent and English is descent. Right. Um, anyway, so that they, they were supposed to this race that, that had kind of isolated from the rest of humanity to protect their wisdom, to protect their understanding and everything. And that was, that was a very, if, if I remember correct, that's kind of where this whole thing started. And that's where the whole, what Shelley is mentioning about, about the uh, the Nazis and especially the Thulians in particular, right? The Thulian Nazi um, sect group, occultic group, if you want to just call it that. Right. Um, they were very much into this idea of the Aryans. Now, the the concept was that Agartha was this island, but the thing is, is that how do you no, get Agartha... to that island? Okay, maybe you're going there. Yeah, yeah, no, you're good. Um, in it, Earth, it was yes, correct, correct. Okay, okay. It, it, it's a little confusing because it's an island, <clears throat> and so you're like, well, it's an island, but the idea is that it's an island inside the Earth, so it's not an easily accessible place, and that's a weird thing to be you're like, well, island in the Earth, what? Well, th- this whole Aryan concept and this whole Thulian Nazi occultic uh, belief system. This is so weird that we're having, it's so bizarre that like this topic has to take, it's almost like we have to take this route to get there. The 
many, many cultures believed that, like we had mentioned before, right, that, that there were these races under the ground. The Aztecs believed that there were seven races that existed inside the earth and that they, their ancestors were, um, were some of those that, that they descended from, that that's where they came from. They came from a race that was from under the earth or inside the earth, I guess is a better way to say. Um, the Hopi, we know, think the same thing. Uh, we there. I mean, there's countless stories like this, you know, just over and over and over. Those are kind of the two that are off, off the top of my head and the, the ones that we researched a little bit more. Um, oh, of course, uh, in the Himalayas, right? The Tibetans and everything. They they believed that... Shangri-La. Yes, correct. No, correct. Shambhala. Shambhala, Shangri-La, same, same thing. Yeah. And closely, those are closely associated with Agartha. Yeah, uh, yep. Which again, when when you look at the areas that that we're talking about here, mountainous area, if you are going underground, it's not that far away. I guess underground kind of being um, almost synonymous with as the crow flies. Um, you can you can see how people could get from the one area to the next area, kind of like our, the, the the tunnel systems between Mexico and El Paso (laughs) or Mexico and, and California and Arizona, or the ones that are, shoot, they still use tunnel systems in the middle East. Uh, They say there are tunnel systems between Syria into, um, into Israel, so <laughs> believe it, which isn't very surprising. My mom in Kansas worked in um, a place called Hutchinson. She worked in salt mines underground, and she wasn't a miner. She did like the books hmm. for this company. Her office was underground in Weird. Kansas. Yeah, in the wow. United States, like you don't think of, and we have we have lots of um, underground um, facilities that aren't military. Because I think people will think underground military facility, maybe not. Maybe I'm just super weird. Um, but there are lots of cave systems throughout the world that have been utilized in France. They utilized their their cave systems and their um, caverns uh, for uh, catacombs for burying the dead. They put, uh, there, there's a place where there are tons of baby bones a year back now in, um, <sighs> Sorry. in Rome, there are the catacombs. The Christians hid and lived in the catacombs during um, the first church persecution in Rome. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. There's there's so much um, there's so much underground. And I think there's so much Activity. that there are TV shows about it. Right. What one of the things that you were mentioning that actually came on our our feed and I I sent to you right away. Um, there, I don't remember what podcast it was, but some, I don't even think that it had anything to do with what we're talking about, but the guy was talking about how if you take all of the, the cave systems in the U S the underground caves in the U S and then you put it on, you put the, the people that are missing in on top of that, that have gone missing, like they line up, up almost perfectly. Missing 401, I think is what it is. Yeah. I think that's what the name of that that yeah. uh, episode of that podcast was missing. I think he I think that he called it missing 401, but the name of the episode is missing 411. Oh yeah, okay. Hey, let it me was pause it was pretty show. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it was super interesting. Let me pause real quick. I'm gonna with my kiddo, but I'm also gonna I think I'm gonna reset my router, so I might go out real quick and then I'll be right back. Okay. Will this okay. upload though? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I'll stay in here. I'll pause. So, 
Okay. Let me know. Let me know if you see anything weird happening with my heirloom pot. Okay. I think it's gonna be a little bit more stable now. We'll see how it goes. Good. I mean, it's plugged in directly. It shouldn't give me any grief. So. Right. Cool. Um. So basically, yeah, we were talking about that cave system matching up, and that it was. Say the names again, because I'm gonna forget. I'm gonna say the it wrong. missing missing four oh one. Yeah. But the name of the episode is missing the missing four one one. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Cool. On the U of the tubes. YouTube's. So check that out. That is definitely worth thinking about. And we'll get more into this on Antarctica. <laughs> Behind the paywall, which if you're right. not signed up yet. Um, and actually, just like Shell was saying, just super quick aside, um, if you guys do si decide to sign up, what we're going to actually do is break up the Antarctica issue or theme, just like we are the Atlantis theme. We're going to break that into a few episodes. It's, it's, I think it's more manageable, and I think it's probably, um, probably more palatable too for you to listen to if you're if you're wanting to kind of go through them. So hopefully we'll be able to get them into a little bit shorter content. But um, hey, Rick. That What's is up? the Lore Lodge. Lore Lodge, that's what they're called? Yeah, the Lore Lodge cool. is who did the episode, and it says, is something supernatural responsible for missing 411? So. Um, I, I'm i just going to put this out there. Um, I think you might know these details better than I will, Shell, but supposedly, I'm not going to give away everything, but when we made, when we made contact with supposed aliens and we brought over um, Nazi high ranking members here to the US to work in our government. <laughs> oh yeah. Part Project of that paperclip. Yes. And part of that understanding with the agreement that uh, the president actually came to with the aliens was that a certain amount of individuals would be allowed to be abducted in national parks. That is that is how that story goes. Yes. So, um, Hollow Earth. Uh, I guess that's a wrap, guys. Just no, I'm just kidding. We're not done. <laughs> um, but uh, no, we won't leave you in a, a cliffhanger like that. So, so that's why I'm telling you, there's so many moving pieces to this episode, um, and that's why we're not, you know, making any particular claims. Uh, just kind of throwing out a bunch of information at you guys. No, man. Um, there's there's just too much. Yeah, way too many moving parts. Way yeah. too many. So we will definitely revisit some of the stuff. But um, let's see. Where were we moving? We're Hollow Earth. Da, da, da. Um, Agartha, right. So essentially that you would find the island of Agartha inside the Earth. Okay. We'll leave that one there. Kind of put a, a thumbtack there. And we'll we can come back to that one later. Um, because these are all kind of tying together. They're all kind of relevant to one another. Um, as we've mentioned, you know, uh, the Hopi Indians, the Aztecs, the... Oh, geez, there's some other ones uh, floating around there that I might be able to pull up here, actually, real quick. I'll, I'll look them up real quick. Shambhala is one that I did want to mention, though. There's some really solid information for that one, Shell. Right. Do you feel like you, you, you can take a crack at that one pretty good? No way. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll no, do my that's, best. I mean, it's it's the mythical. It's, it's the myth pretty crazy. Mythical Shangri La. Shangri La. So it's it's utopian, but yeah. no, the that it's, it's story of um, the account of Nicholas and Helena Rorick, and and their son, their their yeah, adult son right. went with them. He right. he seems to be the one who. Um, he kept two journals, they say, one uh -huh. of the supernatural yep. occurrences and one um, as, as a scientific journal yeah. Of, yeah. of what happened to them as they went to Shambhala. And, and one was very, went very... searching for Shambhala Correct. and they claim they found it. Well, I mean, there's some pretty precarious things around there. To give you guys some some, some kind of... Um, background information, as best I remember it. I'm, I'm kind of doing this off the off the cuff a little bit, but I kind of remember it. Um, this was essentially when we were still in, I mean, frankly, in kind of a war-torn area and a war-torn time of the earth, really. Um, this is yeah, the 1920s. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a rough, it was a rough uh, time in history in general. 
And these two individuals had fled from uh, Russia. Uh, they were Russian citizens, had fled, oh, I forgot about that. Um, if I'm not mistaken, to the U.S. And the U.S. sponsored them. Uh, and it was actually taxpayer funds. Uh, you know, the, the president was the one that sponsored them directly. Um, and they went on this expedition they were very much occultists, like heavy high occultists. Um, Which, super, super occultists. again, that was a big. It, it that was a, everybody. How do I want to say it? The occult was rampant. Yeah. At the turn of that century, the, so from from the end of the nineteenth century to the beginning of the twentieth century, um, there was so much spiritualism going on and people trying to contact the spirit realm and in um, uh, sounds a lot like today. It does. It's it 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 is definitely today's new age is a clap back to. Um, the spiritualism of yeah. the the end of the the eighteen hundreds, beginning of the nineteen hundreds, yeah. into the time. Um, shoot, it, well for the Germans, uh, it, for the SS in particular, yeah. they they were in the thirties and the forties, and yep. um, they they were. Man, there's a term that I can't use. <laughs> so let me find <laughs> another way to say it. They were real deep. <laughs> we're just going to say real deep into the occult. Yeah, yeah. Um, they were something deep into the occult. No, oh, they certainly were. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So these were mega cultists, and they went, I think they did this expedition. Um, originally, they had said it was like for a scientific study of some sort. Um that was the uh, the official title, but really they were they were sent. I mean, they were they were commissioned to find Shambhala, like literally mm -hmm. find Shambhala. And Shambhala, to give you guys some some text around that as well. Huge shout out, by the way, um, to Mr. Mythos. Guys, oh, Mr. Mythos, phenomenal, awesome. and that's really yeah. where I've been. We've been able to find a lot of our information about these particular accounts. Um, you know, this I found guy's some of this deep other stuff. dives are he is they are awesome. very impressive. Um, yeah. We were kind of going over his, some of his stuff, and he'll take you know months at a time to to produce a video. Um, so that that's really really cool. He does really good work. I really recommend you guys go check him out. Uh, total shout out to him. It'd be really cool to, to talk to that guy at some point. Um, really, really right. interesting guy. Anyway, um, he's an anthropologist, by the way. I think by trade. That's, that's what he studied. Yeah. Um, so uh, he mentions that um, as, as they were commissioned by the U.S. to – by President – I'm going to forget. Was it – I'm going to say it's Eisenhower. I think that's wrong. I can't remember who was in the 20s. I don't um, – I don't think it was. Oh, well, that's fine. You can look it up. It's neither here nor there. It um, might have been more like Teddy Roosevelt. Ooh, I think that's right. I think it was Roosevelt. Um, and because Eisenhower, wasn't he in the 40s? Eisenhower was in the 40s, am I right? Uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Roosevelt, I believe it was Roosevelt, commissioned them to go. They did go. And they, if I'm not mistaken, they were there for about 12 months. They met with some of the Dalai Lama, the, the, um, not the Dalai Lama, some of the, the higher, you know, priest types in, in the, uh, in the Tibetan tradition. Right. Right. And I mean, I mean, let's be honest, you know, this, what, what they would call what essentially is what we call Eastern mysticism, which is basically, you know, occultic type, uh, practices, right. High meditation, intense focus, all sorts of stuff like that. I mean, it's very occultic type stuff, type stuff. So they really got deep in in on some of the stuff with some of these guys that were really high level like shaman type dudes, and um, one of them basically told them that that Shambhala was an actual physical place. Now in the scriptures, and you'll hear most people when they talk about Shambhala is a spiritual dimension, a spiritual right. uh, habitation. But these particular this particular group uh, of um, I want to say it is Tibetans that they they were explaining that there is a Tibetan. place in the Himalayas where you can go and enter into inner earth. So dude, it's weird. Like in Tibet is like a a hotbed for yes 
for weird. Did I ever tell weird. you that I took I took a uh, a class that was on um, uh, Tibetan art? I think you did. It was. I think a you did tell me, but fascinating. I, Go ahead. It was it all esoteric because that's kind of how there it was a lot of be to me esoteric stuff, man. I mean, that's like essentially the the birthplace of ma mandalas. Um, that they will focus on these these drawings, these images, and they will like go into these hypnotic um, higher states, these tr these trance like states, and really reach higher levels and stuff. And they'll be meditating for days on end. I mean, they just learn how to do this for days and days and days. Um, yeah, it was it was fascinating, man. Some of that the architecture, sorry, the architecture, the uh, the art and the mandalas, which you know for for ancient eastern peoples you know art and spiritualism are really kind of the same thing there's not really a whole lot of separation right there's a lot of a lot of bleed over by yeah. the way it was calvin coolidge coolidge oh, man, yeah he was that. president from 23 to 29 so oh, okay. okay i mean he was really president for almost all of the 20s that's crazy um i think it was i, I thought it was roosevelt maybe I, I guess i was wrong then um but he, in any case, he commissioned them to do this. And so they went out um, in the bitter cold. I mean, you know, the Himalayas is a brutal landscape. Right. It's just god awful to, to climb and, and explore. And, but sure enough, uh, I guess about they got captured by bandits or, um, I don't remember if it was bandits or soldiers while they were on their, their, their trek. And, after about six months, they, if I, if I remember correctly, after six months, their, their expedition lasted 12, they were released and suddenly were not heard of from. And they spent the next six months, disappeared, and when they reappeared, they started talking about Shambhala, that they had visited this place, that they had visited the place where, where these, I don't know, this other race, this high advanced race was. And um, I don't. I think that later on they went back. But the point here is, not for me to tell you the whole story about um, about them, but rather that that they, in really recent history, like we're talking the last hundred years, they were they were confirming this stuff. Um, it was just crazy. Um, that's a you know it's a real life account, and and people say ah well you know it's it's uh, oh that's what it was, and there that was I think that was one of the first sightings. Um, by uh, that was really reported largely of a UFO sighting. I remember one day they were out watching the they were watching an eagle up high, and they noticed a UFO. And I mean, it's described as such. And UFO sightings were not a thing yet. Like that was not a common thing yet. No, so not and it was not that early. Although honestly, even. Even the uh, the German, uh, you know what? I should not say German because they were Nazi. He, yeah. The the Huge Nazi. For sure. uh, there really is. Um, the Nazi scientists were like, oh yeah, back in the twenties, the the aliens gave us this information. Yeah, you know, and, you and know, what's... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Joe. But uh, no, go go on. What's crazy. Eventually, we'll talk about the Nazis and really bring some weird stuff oh, like yeah. like Satan's uh, uh, the throne of Satan. <laughs> being oh, in gosh, jeez, man, <laughs> crazy stuff. Um, not my not my words. You know, Pergamum. <laughs> I do gotta say, like, what I don't understand is is how the Nazis were able to see these uh, these UFOs if they could not see. <laughs> God. <laughs> so, so right. bad. It's on loop. Sorry, guys. Um, I know that was terrible. I I'm not apologizing, but it was terrible. So so we have some pretty recent history that's showing us this stuff. And actually, what's funny is a lot of these tales um, stopped after the Second World War. Like I like I mentioned. But I'm just going to real quickly uh, mention some of these things to you guys real quick. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. A Welshman, Walter Maps, in the latter part of the 12th century, in his collection of anecdotes, tells of a prehistoric king <gasps> of Britain. I'm sorry, puppy. Oh, 
I'm sorry, I rolled over my dog trying to look at my map. So sorry. Oh. <laughs> um, Walter Maps tells of a prehistoric kingdom of Britons called Herla, who met uh, of a Briton, excuse me, called Herla, who met the Scot Skrylings or Inuits, who took him beneath the earth. So there's that. In ancient Irish, uh, there was a legend of a uh, far land to the north where the sun always shone, and it was always summer weather. In the Japanese paradise, this was super fascinating to me, it was sit situated on top of the globe and at the same time at the center of the earth. That's, those are wow. quotes. It was called, check this out, the island of, con of the congealed drop. Holy moly, that's a... Huh. That's a crazy thing like um the chinese thing. believed in a terrestrial paradise round in form and is described not only as the center of the earth but also as directly under shangto's heavenly palace yeah definitely um declared to be in the pole star and is sometimes called the palace of the center um so those are just kind of some offhand accounts that um i'll tell you guys what i'll, I'll tell you guys later on where i'm getting that information from because if i give it away too quickly <laughs> then I'm going to spoil all the stuff. But um, there's there's several accounts uh, of things like this. Um, let's see here. There is one more that I wanted to mention. Was there something that was missing, Shell, at this point? Or am I good to keep going? No, I was just looking at where Tibet is. Tibet is a super obscure region, man. Yeah, who 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 now rules Tibet? Isn't it? I mean, China's over Tibet, right? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, actually, in that class in particular, in that class about Tibetan art and Tibetan history and stuff, um, they were definitely talking about the, the Red Army and all that stuff, how they came in, how they took over, how they literally started painting Chinese characters all over, like, mountain faces and stuff like that. I mean, just... Oh, that's so sad. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's... <laughs> one way to put it man it's brutal it's gross um i do want to tell you guys about one really interesting um bit of information uh but i guess before i do that we should mention the poles thing huh shell the entrances yeah. okay um are you able to find that image do you know which one i'm talking about shell the the basic image yeah, that everyone always pulls up yeah. so while Shell is doing that, I want to talk to you guys about kind of the hollow earth theory in general. Um, I'm not going to go super deep into it. I, I'm not going to pretend to know a whole, whole lot about it. Um, but just for the the sake of kind of talking about it, I want, to, I want to mention this. And then after this, we're going to go behind the paywall to talk about a few other things that are super cool, super fun, and I think you guys will find fascinating. Um, but... The the idea of the hollow earth theory, theory in, in its basic form, we already talked about Agartha and stuff and how you get there. Well, the way you get to these places largely is at the poles, at the south and the north pole. And according to the hollow earth theory, the reason that the instrumentation of uh, aviatic vehicles always goes haywire is not because of the 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 magnetism but, but rather because you're you're crossing literally right over the entrance to to inner earth uh, essentially is the idea and um that is kind of what sets everything off and if you guys know anything about this history in antarctica i'm kind of giving you guys a little um a little throwing you guys a little bone here about what we're going to be talking about in antarctica but or in part right um, there was an expedition um, called Project High Jump, and a an admiral, Admiral Byrd, who was flying his he was flying his uh, solo his little solo fighter jet. And I'm not sure exactly what it was. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but he was flying alone, and came to a portion where all of a sudden he was no longer he all his instrumentation went crazy, and I won't go into the details, but he basically like saw what he calls woolly mammoths. He saw entire forests. He saw all sorts of stuff. I mean, very, very crazy account. Now, some people have discounted this, saying that it's not his writing style, this and that. But 
there are some weird things around his his life that don't quite add up to it just being all a hoax or all you know hogwash because when they went for they were supposed to go for i believe it was two years was it shell that they were supposed to go Mm -hmm. they went for what maybe six months eight months something like that and they hightailed at home um yeah like Apparently, according to Admiral Byrd, like with with their their tail between their legs, basically, um, and went back and told the president, um, which I, I believe was um, I believe was Eisenhower's in the forties. Um, hey, we don't have any way to face the threat that exists against humanity if we wanted to. There's nothing we could do. We would be overpowered, destroyed, wiped out in a heartbeat. And they said, don't ever talk about this again. <laughs> so they and conf- he didn't. And he didn't. And they confiscated his journals. And uh, But apparently he left one to his son. And the reason that one's controversial is because it doesn't really seem to match up with his writing style. But also, like, why would he leave early? I mean, he was like a decorated, decorated army officer. I mean, he was crazy decorated. Just, just a just a ruthless um, fighter, you know, against the enemy and like loved his country and loved his countrymen and everything. He was just, he was just an all out awesome soldier. I mean, he just was. And so for him to be told, you know, shut up, don't talk about it. He never said another word about it. He had his journals confiscated. Um, Frankly, it was kind of crazy. You guys can see some of these, these images. Um, they're pretty fascinating. Shell and I were actually like, I was like, eh, holes in the like that kind of stuff, and I was like, I don't know about that. Yeah, really, I'm, I'm like, well, it's interesting, but I don't give don't up buy my vote. It. Don't buy it, right? I get it. I totally get it. I mean, I'm I not... mean, it would take a lot more to convince me, and I'm not sure. saying that it is impossible. I just, I, I think Shell and I are kind of on the same boat on this one. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> I don't want to be on the boat that goes anywhere near that hole. Well, there there was a gentleman that I was just reading about that. Um, let me see. In fact, let me see if I can find this guy. Do 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 do. I can't remember what his profession was, but he, you know, definitely had a, a decent amount of money to be able to do what he was going to do. He wanted to basically. Doctor Brooks is the guy. <clears throat> um, he believed in the idea of a. Um, of a hollow earth. His name is Dr. Brooks Agnew. He was a physicist and an engineer and planned, was planning an expedition into in, the inner earth w- w- in trying to find the polar opening. He was, he was willing to pay for a Russian icebreaker called Yamal um, to sail to the polar cap of the north and try and break through the ice cap to supposedly get to the other side, which was like, what in the world? Um... So, apparently, you know, like, there's enough people that believe that it's, like, a legit thing for it to have some sort of sway. Um, I mean, I could also say the same thing about Flat Earth, right? Um, oh, you're looking for that video right. show? Here, and actually, I'm going to look for that other one while you're doing that. But it's just, it's super, it is a super fascinating idea. Um, there are some images that, well, I guess that's that's worth talking about, too, right, with NASA? So... If you guys, speaking of megaliths, if you guys remember on the megaliths episode, we talked about Antarctica's um, pyramids and that the area where the pyramids, these these supposed pyramids, you know, I don't, I'm not telling you they are or they're not, but they look like pyramids to me. Um, and there is solid reasoning to believe that they are pyramids. Now, people have told me, you know, because I, I said, you know, you don't, right angles don't appear in in nature and people are like oh yeah they do in crystals i'm like sure that's fair but they don't usually appear on giant very large rock faces in the middle of the freaking arctic right. that's exposed to the elements at constant you know constant battering um that's a rarity that's a rarity especially with snow uh, that's a huge rarity so um you know, I'll, I'll, you'll forgive me if I'm, you know, not the most scientific in the world, but I find it a little rough just to believe it out on its face. But in that episode, we, we talked about those pyramids and how 
in 2016 and up until 2016, those images were available. And sure enough, I found an article in 2016 supposedly debunking these uh, pyramids. And that's ex the exact same year it was from. Well, literally right before this, Shell and I were looking at this uh, um, this article, the one she just posted, actually. And sure enough, they were debunking that the North Pole, supposedly, right, has a hole there. And there were images in a guy's video that he actually posted, which was super interesting. And she's going she's gonna to show it here in a second. Well, where... I don't have the video. It doesn't want to upload. Oh, bummer. Here, let me see. Um, but here is this one. So that, you see that one right there, that little, where it says flying saucers, that thing that will instantly take away our credibility. Click on that. <laughs> no. That um, sounds great, Rick. <laughs> what, no. what are you looking at? Uh, what's wrong? No, the one, you see the, where your image is right next to it, it says flying saucers right there. No, you don't see it? No, I absolutely do. Um, it says Mary Evans, the the whole. Okay, okay hold on. Let me. Let me see if I can enlarge. This oh, maybe. this one right here. Oh gosh, it does yeah, say flying one. saucers. Um, First photo so of the hole at the pole. That that's a that sounds uh, <laughs> suggestive. Um, they, they <sighs> this is an actual satellite image of of the pole. Now, granted that hole there could it really could be just magnetism i mean i'm not i'm not saying it is or it's not but what is curious see you scroll down like that was from the e sorry oh, okay yeah 2021 is what i meant to these say. are different takes right but there's and, and even if you look down here where it says so it says flying saucers right below it says hollow earth if you look at that one um where there's the white cloud that's covering it up right there i know you can't see my pointer this one? but yeah so even when that's the case it's either like exposed or completely covered it's very weird it's like very very weird you know what though these are all the same images like this yeah they look, are the formations are exactly the same yeah. this one's just inverted because here's your little doohickey blah, 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 blah. <laughs> don't ask me to do that again i cannot but the, these are all like the same photos. That's a different one. That's interesting. Shell and I are intentionally doing good cop, bad cop, guys. Um, <laughs> because Shell was like, I'm going to take the skeptic's position. I'm like, that's fine, dude. Like, I'm, I mean, and I'm not going to try and convince you. It's not hard for me to you, do. But... I'm kind of a, a skeptic. So. <laughs> it's a good, no, it's a good thing, man. It's a, it's a good problem. Um, let's see here. I'm going to see if I can present. I, I was able to pull the video up. Let me see real quick, Shell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let yeah, me yeah. see. Stop sharing. Yeah, you're okay, good. all yours. Um, let's select the screen. We'll just do the entire screen. Um, actually, entire screen, StreamYard broadcast. Is that what I want to do? Do I want to do the StreamYard? No, I don't want to do the StreamYard broadcast. Okay, allow. All right, now let's pull this guy up real quick. You guys can see this on my screen? Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to play this. I'm just going to kind of drag some of these photos so you guys can see them for yourself. Um, okay. And this guy, is, this is actually the North Pole, which I thought was very fascinating because we don't really hear about that very much right now. Um, we hear more so about... See, that was the image Santa that I was Santa Claus, is that you? Santa Claus. So this was taken on January 6th of 1967 by the ESSA. And then he shows another one here in a second. Da, da, da. Oh, and actually, that's the image I wanted to look at. Can you see that good? See, it is a Gartha. Yeah, 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 you're right. And then if you... Oh, it's super grainy, isn't it? Yeah, that's but... Weird. Well, right here... Is, I mean, people is... can go and find it. There are yeah. hundreds I'll, I'll of representations it. of it. I'll totally post it. So this is Shambhala, right? Um, I can't read some of these, but this is the one that most caught my attention. I was like, oh, Shambhala. Whoa, weird. Um, Agartha is supposedly this whole place. Um, this Don't they also show, though, is it one of those little things? I think in the upper right quadrant, uh, the UFO landing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Saucer something. to Venus. 
<laughs> Jump on board, guys. They all exist. It's no. not the saucer to Mars, though, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Just the one to Venus. So, where you weigh a ton because it's a, a big ton. <laughs> Um, big, and it's big. It, I just wanted to show this because I thought it was super interesting. Like, this is the kind of con conceptual um, way to imagine this, right? So all this is like what contains the Earth. Now, I, I I will say it does seem a little weird. Like, if the Earth is hollow, how does it maintain its structural integrity, right? How well, does I guess, all the water not flow into the middle? I know it's it's very weird. Uh, you know. I, I'm I mean, also... that's where this brain goes right away. Oh, sure. well, it is that why it's frozen? Well, and, and, well, and I mean, and you, you wonder, I guess if, if it's spinning, like it, I don't know. Well, I would, weird. honestly, I would expect um, a hollow earther to tell me that it's because it's frozen. And so the ice keeps the water from going over. Yeah, it's entirely into possible. The tunnely tunnel thingy thingy. Well, but on the inside, yeah, still, it is very weird. Anyway, um, all of these here, if you guys see these little lines, these are supposedly entrances to, to, um, Shambhala, Oh, that's interesting. Arthur. I mean, still not buying it, but oh, that's so, interesting. <laughs> there is a guy, um, from Kentucky, the Kentucky Mammoth Cave. That's the thing I'm about to talk about here after mm. we finish up. It's, it's got his whole explanation. I may read it. I may just like narrate it, but it is very, very cool. Oh, is that uh, what's behind the paywall? That is indeed what's behind the paywall. Among Ooh, other I'm things, excited. We'll, we'll, we'll chit chat about some other stuff. But um, that is what I wanted to share with you guys, um, just so you kind of understood the theory and where it's coming from. I want to end this portion just by saying, I don't know. I'm not pretending to know. I don't, Shelley's definitely not either. She's a skeptic here. Um, even though she's wearing the conspiracy theory shirt, strangely enough. You know what? <laughs> what? What is it they say nowadays that that uh, delineates between a conspiracy theory and the truth? <laughs> it's about Six nine months. Yeah, well, it's more like four now. Um, <laughs> geez. So, um, you know, don't you don't have to make up your mind, but this is just to get your brain thinking about some of these things. Like, was it possible? Is it possible? Did the Nephilim use these? Were they intentionally set up for that person, for that, uh, excuse me, for that purpose? Are they living under the earth, inside the earth? Are those just tunnels for, for transportation? I mean, what's going on? I don't know. I don't know. So to come back to earth a little bit. We never um, left. Oh, okay. Well, we went in around and about. I feel like we got um, even closer to the earth than we normally are. Gosh, oh my goodness, this guy <laughs> right here, this one, oh, he's there. Yeah, nope, yeah. he's there. <laughs> so my my screen not being on mirror kills me, guys. I can't even fix my hair because <laughs> this is that side. You got a broken. Oh, it breaks my brain, it's true. Um... <laughs> There are so many underground cities, underground yeah. ruins, and I don't, uh, I'm not going to uh, join an expedition to Agartha or Shangri-La or Shambhala because... If you pay two ninety nine, it's part of your subscription. We got. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll take you with us. It, the only way I am going to China is via the internet. So I am just saying. Oh, I want to go to China. I'm not gonna lie. Um. Well, you have a good time. I love you. You already know my feelings. I will sit and man man the desks at home. Nice, nice. Um. There, there are so many though ruins. Um, of underground underground cities um it's crazy how many there are in the united states one that's what's most Missouri, fascinating right? there's uh there's some some crazy one under death valley um in southern california there's there's just so many multitudes and like i said um my mom worked underground at a uh the salt mining um, not as a miner. It, there, there are lots of underground things. Yeah. 
check some out and it'll blow your mind. It's it's real interesting. And I don't know about you if you like to spelunk or not. Um, it's terrifying. I do. Oh, I like. I mean, I. It's I, cool, but it's terrifying. There, there's a limit for me. I, I don't want to rappel down into dark spaces where spiders may live. Oh, <laughs> because <probably>. spiders, <clears throat> no. But like, um, Carl's bad caverns are real cool. Oh, absolutely. Um, there, there are caverns all over the places. Ones that are touristy. So, we, like, we you go down and you're recently. totally safe. That are near about 25, 30 minutes from our house. Uh, it was a little, it was a little pricey, but it was totally worth it, man. You can walk the whole way; it just gets fresher and fresher and fresher as you go down. It was really, really cool, really cool. I've, I've been in a few different cave systems, and I, I do. I think they're we'll super the cool. Um, and being a desert dweller, you know how nice it is to go underground, and it's just like a balmy. 72 everywhere you go inner space you know? caverns if you're in the area check out inner space caverns very cool very very cool that's cool where are those uh that's in georgetown it's about 30 minutes from where i'm at it's it's okay. really close it's i mean it's practice practically within my you know purview right there i mean there there are all sorts of um natural caverns mm -hmm. and caves mm -hmm. but there's also places that have been inhabited and um built upon you can see the hopi maybe you can see some of the the oh, hopi, hopi so. um caves down in the grand canyon that we were talking about i'm just ignoring you at I this know. point <laughs> <laughs> um but check them out. Check out these yeah. these underground Do things. Watch that out. show about underground cities. I think Holy that's cow. what it's called. It's, it's super fascinating. Like um, underground. There's, there's a pyramid in uh, underground in um, Italy. What? Like, right? Like you think, nah, nah. But then again, the Roman catacombs. Where is Rome? Duh, but a pyramid? In Italy. Right? That's wow. what they call it. So I don't know what it looks like. I haven't really wow. delved into it much yet, but there's something. And it's full. Yeah. our world is full of really interesting things. Like God really didn't just do like, eh. he did real cool stuff down to the minute things that we never would have thought of, you know, um, and he he did him. He he has made the coolest thing, the things, uh, mm -hmm. all of them, seen and unseen, the things we know and don't know. I mean, cryptid um, and lucid, <laughs> right? The 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 mundane and the supremely divine, like yeah. everything in between. And everything in between. That's right. It's it's kind of cool. So. Uh, honestly, I I don't know what I think about Agartha. I I would be super surprised. I would be as surprised that there are people in a Shangri La type place as I would that there are actual mole people. So, <laughs> really and you know, I mean, these are either. I guess I would just just really close this out for you guys um, before the paywall, saying we only stopped talking about this seriously or at least to some degree you know re relevantly after world war ii that's not even a hundred years ago people were still talking about this still believing this stuff still having some reason to believe it um so well and like i said so there's right. lots of runes that's what i was saying lots of underground yeah. runes there's tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of mythos <laughs> surrounding underground um, civilization, lost topic. paradises. So usually when there's that much smoke, there's something somewhere burning. Yep. Shotgun over the fireplace. Shotgun <laughs> over the fireplace. Nice. Um, yeah, guys, we're going to, I guess we're going to wrap it up. Just the reason that this is so relevant to us is, and I, I wanted to, I really wanted to drive this point home is that we got interested in this in the first place. Me personally, what, what really drew my attention was like the Hopi accounts that all of a sudden these weird creatures start showing up from under the earth and they're like 
What? Where do these guys come from? And the Hopi aren't the Hopi aren't the only ones. I think the Hopi believe that that's where they came from. But there are other ones that are like, we didn't invite these guys. What are they doing here? Like, what's going on, man? The um, Anasazi lore is my favorite of all of Native really American. More of it that's really cool. is. Uh, it's it's tied in with the Hopi Native American history. Lore. Is so freaking cool! It's, it's so really cool. really is. It really is. We'll be doing. Uh, definitely be doing. I, I want to. I really mean this. I want to invite. Um, uh, uh, Chief Joseph Riverwind. Oh my gosh! And his wife. That would be like just watching super something with cool. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soon enough. Soon enough. All right, and dude. I like. I like that they love Jesus. Ooh. Yes, man, ah. they love Jesus. I'll, I'll tell you about some. We'll talk about it behind the paywall, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, God bless. If you guys would like to join us again, it's uh, on Spotify for three bucks a month. Super cheap. Super easy. Super accessible. You spend three bucks like on a drink at starbucks you probably spend more um if if you buy coffee at all or anything like it um you can also do the same thing on spotify i'm happy to do it it's it's a little bit more of gymnastics for you guys to get there but i you know we we make sure we're on top of it so you guys have access um for as little as three bucks there uh you can support us with five if you want it's really up to you um but we appreciate your subscription we appreciate your time and we covet your prayers um we are constantly noticing how we are bombarded by the enemy, um, the enemies, I might well say. So um, we appreciate your prayers. We love you guys. And, Absolutely. Uh, um, I don't want us to ever end an episode where we do not bless the listeners. Let's see. So I'm going to see if I can do it. You help me through it. You ready? Okay, go. Okay. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord give you peace. No, I missed it up, didn't I? That's later. Be gracious. The Lord be gracious to you and turn his yes. countenance or is it his face? His countenance yeah, upon his you. Yeah, his countenance. Mm -hmm. The Lord give, and you, give you and give you peace. And that's the end Forever. of it, right? It is. Forever. <laughs> Forever and ever and amen. Okay. Amen. <laughs> well, well yeah. shalom, guys. Shalom, shalom. Maranatha. And uh, we'll catch you soon. Maranatha. God bless, guys. Maranatha, guys. Good night. Later. Thank you for watching this episode of The Christian Theological Dark Web. For questions or comments, please email us at thechristiantheologicaldarkweb at gmail.com. If you'd like to support us, please look for the Patreon link in the description. This has been another production of CTDW Studios. Thank you, and God bless.